doing nothing at all. My hopes are so high that you kiss my kill me. Yo, I'm sitting here with Chris Caraba of Dashboard Confessional here in KL Live for his solo acoustic showcase, of course. Welcome to Malaysia. Thank you. I'm it's your first to be time. Here. Is it very hot for you? No, I'm from Florida. It's just as hot there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, so you're used to the tropical weather. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when you pack for tours, right, aside from the obvious toothbrush, clothes, I got my toothbrush, and your moisturizers, what's that one thing that you always need to have on tour? I always bring my running shoes. Oh, do you go running? Well, I just might have to get away from somebody, you know? It's good to have them. Uh, what sparked the idea of going on a solo acoustic tour? Well, I started Dashboard as a solo band. It was just me and an acoustic guitar for a, quite a while. And um, over the years, as I traveled, I tacked on bandmates, meeting them as I traveled the country in the, in the U.S. But um, last year, I did a, a series of reunion, show, of reunion shows, of, uh, of anniversary shows for my first record, which was only me. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed it. I found it challenging to find the find the spirit of like a whole band but by yourself. Uh, but your set tonight, can you tell us more about it? What's your set this like? I don't, I don't really write a set list so I, I write like songs that I think I think I might play and then I generally don't. I play whatever anybody calls out and um, if I can hear them then I'll try, try to play it. Oh for real? Mm -hmm. so, you just, um, so when it comes to songwriting, right, would you say you're more of a thinker or a feeler? I think I'm more of a, I, I think I'm more of a feeler. I feel I'm more of a thinker, but I think I'm more of a feeler. Okay, I hope you guys got that. Your <laughs> lyrics, right, are very personal. It mm. touches, it really touches your emotional strings, basically. Um, where does that come from? You know, when I play music, when I, when I play chords or melody on the guitar, I think there's an inherent, um, in the melodic sense of it, there's something inherently emotional. It has its own emotional feeling. And I, it usually that just reminds me of some event in my life that I've had or that I, that I hoped to, I hope to have. Or, uh, and I kind of try to tell that story as honestly as I can and try not to get away from what that initial feeling from the, from the guitar was. Um, is there a song that you would say is closest to your heart? Hmm. It's tough to pick one song that's closest to my heart. Okay, but, a couple. I always like to, there's a song I have called Remember to Breathe that I like to play a lot. It's very simple. Um, and it's only like the beginning of a, of a larger story. Um, but somehow it just takes on new properties every time I play it in front of an audience. It becomes something new every night. So that's one of my, that's one of my favorites. And then, you, I guess, are a lot of girls' dream guy. Because I do do push-ups. Your, your skills, your words, your songwriting, your music playing skills. But how would you describe your dream girl or a dream girl? A dream girl. The concept of it. I mean, like, you know, I've, I've never been like a type guy. Oh, yeah? I've kind of gone out with a, a lot of different girls of a lot of different ethnicities and backgrounds and... Um, I don't have a specific type. I like smart women a lot. I like musical women. So your uh, skill is obviously singing, songwriting, playing the guitar. True. Uh, so Those are some of my skills. <laughs> oh yeah, just, just some. some. Uh, so in high school, was it easy for you with the girls? Were you like the popular arty guy in high school? Um, you know, <clears throat> I don't remember. We were like a, we were the arty kids were their own sector, and so, and there weren't many of us, and we stuck together. I don't think we ever even. It's you know like you see those movies like those 80s movies or early 90s movies where like the counterculture kids are like fighting to to make it and be popular and all that stuff, but we just didn't even recognize that the other kids existed. I know that's kind of like arrogant, but we were into our own thing. We were all about skateboarding and music and art and theater and all this weird stuff between all the guys and girls that were in, the, in, in that social circle. And it just never occurred to us what anybody else thought of us or what they were up to. So you do tweet, right? Yeah, I do, but I've, I've taken a break. But yes, I do How tweet. How come? Is that a conscious decision? It was, yeah, it was a conscious decision. Why? Because it's a time suck. I was doing it just like every moment of my day. 
and I realized I'm I'm not writing songs. I'm like tweeting. Mm -hmm. Like I should probably be writing songs for a while. I haven't put a record out in like two years. Yeah. It's like put this thing down, pick that thing up, and get to work. So that's why. Yes. What do you do for fun? Um. Well, I like to go skateboarding. I have motorcycles. I like um, reading books. Um, I like building stuff. Um, building stuff like carpentry or? Yes, yeah, like wood, simple woodwork stuff or I like electron, like, uh, like, like working with electric gear, stuff like what that. What was your last project? Um, I built like a like a sound baffler for the studio that I that I have, like a big, strange-looking, ugly piece of wood that points the sound exactly where you want it to go. It's a bunch of strange angles that are inconsistent and stuff like that. And how long did that take you? Oh, it's like a half day, half day job. Um, we ran a competition for about two weeks mm. um, for our listeners to win meet and greet classes with you. Okay. We Later on. I can't wait for and that. To win it, they had to drop us a confession, like their deepest, darkest confessions. Uh oh. Had stuff like, oh, this guy was fantasizing about his fiancee's sister, and this guy who always sticks his nose, and he like, that's how he deals with salty food, apparently. So I think it's only fair that you give them a confession in return. Say that last one again. He picks his nose to deal with salty food? Yeah, I, I didn't get it either, but that's what he said, right? Because I pick my nose to deal with the lust I have for my girlfriend's sister. What kind of confession? Do I, I curse far too much and I lie a little bit too often, but it's all in good fun. Is that a fair confession? Everybody knows that. I make up the stories about what the songs are about. Everybody knows that. Really? Like, no, well, I mean, like, not, not the ones that are real, okay. but like the ones where I'm on stage and I say things that are clearly untrue. <laughs> Life's too short to... Stop. That's it. You are watching Chris Garaba from Dashboard Confessional. Good luck for your show tonight. Thank you, Zara. I can't wait. I can't wait. Thank you.